All right, let's go ahead and get started. Good morning, everyone. This is uh, session 3173, Real World Considerations for Integrating NetApp Technologies in VMware Environments. As I mentioned earlier before we got started, if you were originally signed up for 3123, that session for some reason was canceled, so they put us in here. Hopefully, um, this will be a, an acceptable alternative to your original scheduling choice. So before we delve into the details on the presentation, let me just talk about our agenda very briefly. I'll start out with an introduction. Then I would like to set the context around our discussion, kind of define the parameters and the basis for why we're talking about this. We'll then talk about some of the key technologies that are involved. Following that, we will take a deeper look at the integration considerations how we might go about addressing those, and then I'll wrap up with a small list of additional resources. Now, before I go any farther, let me just say, how, how many people in here uh, would consider themselves VMware experts? Okay. How many would consider yourselves VMware beginners? Okay. The experts, I'd love to have you guys in here but you're probably not going to get anything out of it, okay? So I, I don't want you to waste your time. Time at a conference like this is valuable, so if you want to skip out, I, I won't be offended. I might throw something at you, but I won't be offended. All right, so you're probably wondering who I am and why I'm standing up here talking to you about integration concerns. My name, as I mentioned earlier, is Scott Lowe. I work for e Technology. We're a uh, NetApp star partner and a national reseller based in the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, my role at e is the national technical lead for our virtualization practice. So I lead the engineering team, pre-sales and post-sales engineering for our virtualization. I've been in the industry 15 plus years. Um, it's kind of hard. You lose track after a while how long you've actually been doing it. Um, in addition to my role at e I also uh, write and uh, have had a number of articles published in various online magazines. I've been quoted, news stories, that sort of thing. I've done videos blah, blah, blah. Um, some of you may know me from my website. Um, I've got the URL listed there. It's a pretty popular virtualization-oriented uh, website. Um, VMware picks up the RSS feed and republishes it. Microsoft picks up the RSS feed, republishes that kind of thing. Just curiosity, more from my own vanity than anything else. How many people have ever visited my site? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's, that's cool. Just curious. Did you find it useful? Okay, all right, good. If it, if it, if it doesn't, then you know, I need to fix something. Uh, as you can probably tell by my site, if you visited any, any sort of regularity, you would know that I'm a, a big fan of a virtualization and a, a huge fan of NetApp storage. I love the technologies that NetApp has, and uh, I love to see how these technologies can fit together. So uh, that's kind of what led me to create this presentation, and, and I'm honored to have the opportunity to stand up here and talk to you guys about it. All right, so let's set the context or the foundation around this discussion, okay? As we talk about these integration considerations, it's important to note that these integration considerations are really reflections on the virtualization solution itself more than anything else. Okay, these are not uh, drawbacks or limitations necessarily of NetApp's technology. They're more a reflection of, hey, I'm taking this particular functionality, this particular feature, I'm integrating it with something else, and as a reflection of the particular way that the virtualization solution was implemented, or the way it's built, or the way it operates, we get some challenges out of that. Okay? And it's very common. You see this stuff in, in all kinds of fields as you work in very, integrating various technologies. Uh, by the way, you guys in the back, can you hear me OK? OK, great, thanks. So uh, as we all know, the only constant in technology is change. As virtualization solutions evolve, as NetApp's technologies evolve, some of these considerations are also going to evolve. And I anticipate they'll even likely disappear. So as we go through and talk about limitations surrounding various features and functionality within NetApp, it's very likely that these things are going to change, disappear over the next year, 18 months, two years. Now you might be asking, well, why do we need to worry about this? Why are we going to be talking about these integration considerations? The reason why is because as people who are, are trying to become the trusted advisors to our customers, we need to be able to keep a holistic solution in mind. We can't get caught up in the technology for technology's sake mindset. There are some incredibly cool technologies. And now I'm getting interference. Uh, so there are some very cool technologies that 
uh, we can do. You know, we have the ability to clone files and clone volumes and, and all kinds of just fabulous, fabulous stuff. And I'm going to skip the remote presenter since it's freaking out on me. Um, yeah, uh, so use my phone for the remote presenter, so that's, that's why it's freaking out. Um, so we need to keep these things in mind so that we can present a holistic solution to the customer, keeping in mind the real-world considerations, keeping in mind the, the interaction between these technologies and give them a solution that actually works, not just a solution that is cool, but a solution that actually addresses their business needs and their business concerns. All right, so what are some of the key technologies that are involved that we're going to talk about here, okay? Here we see, we're going to talk a little bit about LUN resizing. That's a pretty simple one. I promise it'll get better after that. Okay. Uh, Array-based cloning, which will involve LUN clones, flex clones, as well as sys clones or file-level flex clones, as they're now known. Okay. And uh, we'll talk about deduplication and IP-based storage. Now, uh, we have a microphone here in the middle, but don't worry about using that. If you have a question, just raise your hand, yell at me, interrupt me, whatever you need to do. I'll be happy to take the question and... Uh, if I forget to repeat the question, just remind me to repeat the question so they can catch it on video. First, LUN resizing. Okay. Um, we all know that it's, it, it's easy. It's a piece of cake. We can go into data on tap. We can resize the LUN. You know, no big deal, right? But the problem is, of course, that most virtualization solutions aren't going to automatically recognize that. Now, we know that on the Windows world, we can use SnapDrive to automate that LUN resizing process, and it will, under the covers, take care of the Windows complexities for resizing that LUN and telling NTFS to now recognize the additional space and so on and so forth. Well, uh, this is a VMware session. We don't have snap drive for ESX, okay? And so we can't go in and tell something to automatically hide the complexities of expanding a VMFS partition. So when we talk about resizing LUNs with VMware ESX, there's, there's an issue there. There's a problem. Now, this is not unique at all to NetApp. This would be common in any storage vendor providing block storage, okay? It's not unique necessarily to VMware, okay? Aside from some of the specific considerations like using SnapDrive in a Windows world, this is going to be common with any host operating system. But it is something we have to keep in mind because as we present these solutions to the customer, we have to keep in mind, well, you know, I might pre be proposing a particular LUN size for a solution, but if that LUN size is going to have to change down the road, we've got to account for that. We can't just go in and easily resize the LUN and have ESX pick that up automatically, okay? Now, there is a workaround. Most of you are probably familiar with VMFS extents, okay? Ability for us to resize a LUN and then add an extent um, to pick up that additional space. Of course, extents are something of a, um, a sore point in the VMware world. How many people like extents? How many people don't like extents? How many people don't care what are extents? Well, there's a lot of you that just didn't vote. I hope that wasn't the case a few weeks ago. Um, so, the problem with VMS, VMFS extents is that uh, once you add an extent, you can't ever go back and remove it. You, you lose the entire set. If I add a, an extent and now I have two extents together and they're comprising a certain amount of space, if I want to remove one of those, well, forget it. I've got to remove the entire thing. Plus, customers get confused about an extent and they delete something they shouldn't have deleted and then they lose a lot more than they should have lost. Lost, so it ends up being a big deal. As a matter of fact, some VMware partners back at VMworld, I was in a partner technical advisory board meeting, and a lot of VMware partners in there were saying, hey, you know, we don't even want you to have extents in the product. We'd rather you just take VMFS extents out of the product entirely because they cause too much problem for us. So something to keep in mind. Now let's move on to array-based uh, cloning. And this was